Today on Premiere Prep, I'm gonna show you how to take your shots from this to that. Correcting lens distortion in Blender is surprisingly easy. You only need one node, and that is the lens distortion node. Now, do keep in mind that this example is being done using footage from a GoPro, but you can use any other wide-angle lens footage as well. So without further ado, let's jump into Blender. Now, the first step is obviously to open up Blender, and that is obviously a very hard task. Just kidding. Now, we're gonna make sure our render settings are correct, as always. These are just my settings. They will, of course, vary for you. There we go. Now we're going to jump into our node editor and we're gonna change it to scene composite node and use nodes and I'm gonna add the backdrop. Of course, we can get rid of this by hitting X or delete, move this over. We're also going to want to size it accordingly within our backdrop. Now we're going to just drag and drop our video right into here and my video is 1,368 frames. So we're going to change our duration on the video and the actual project. Now, I'm gonna hit Control, Shift, and click on the node to add our viewer node, as always. And we are going to hit Shift A, come down here to Distort, and add Lens Distortion Node. And that's the only node that we need for this. We're gonna go ahead and drag and drop it to Composite. And to make sure that our entire video stays within the actual render of the, well, render, the render frame of the render, we're gonna hit fit, and that's pretty much all we need. Now, my effect actually started taking place for this example video. It started taking place about uh, 844 frames. There we go. And of course, we can keyframe this by hitting I on any one of these values. But I don't need that for this example. Now, as you can see, the GoPro, it has a very wide, uh, <laughs> wide lens. And I've got this distortion right here. Now, I know that the Hero 5 obviously has a narrow field of view option and all that that will get rid of this. But many people still don't have that with wider angle lenses. And sometimes you still might want to use this to get a more controllable wide angle and everything when in tight spaces and stuff like that. So. Um, for this, on the GoPro Hero Black, the only real number that we need to worry about is distort right here for most distortion um, fixes and everything. Now on the Hero 5 Black, on the setting that I had it, it was negative 0 0.09. There we go. Distortion's fixed right there. That's really all there is to it. But there are a few other things that we can do. For instance, um, if we hit unclick fit, we can actually, I'm sorry, size it up to one. And you see we get this modification right here. And this could be cool for adding some kind of like sci-fi video monitor or something like that. And we could comp this into some video screen and it'd look pretty cool right there. Of course we hit fit, we get that. So it's really tight. But for regular, we get that. As you can see, our post is nice and straight. And that's really about it. But after we come back from the break, I will show you a couple of cool other options that this node has that can definitely be very helpful for you. It's sponsor time, and this episode of Premiere Prep is sponsored by Edit Share Lightworks. The Lightworks video editor has been used on some of the finest films in cinema history to include Hugo, The Wolf of Wall Street, and The King's Speech, just to name a few. It's available on Windows, Linux, and Mac, and it has many advanced features such as 10-bit color capabilities, multicam editing, and many more as well. And as a film world viewer, you get to use the coupon code film underscore world underscore 2017 to receive a 40% discount off an entire year subscription to Lightworks. All these links are in the description. Thank you very much to Lightworks for sponsoring this episode of Premiere Prep. Okay, this lens distortion node can actually do far more than just correcting lens distortion. It uh, has a couple of other cool features. Now, one thing that I've loved for a while is the dispersion value right here. As you can see, we add that and it creates this kind of, it creates this kind of uh, effect right here. As you can see, I don't really know how to describe that, but it's a cool effect right there. We change it to 0.5 and all that kind of stuff. 
And of course, as I mentioned already, these are animatable, so you can do some cool things there as far as animating these goes. But we don't need that right now, so just change this down to zero. So that's a really cool feature right there. Another one is jitter, and basically this adds kind of a noise to your entire video. As you can see there, turn it on, turn it off and on. And it's really, really kind of cool if you want to add some kind of like film grain to it or fit this into a TV and make it seem like it's TV video, something like that. Again, that's where you could use this. Like if, say we make it uh, point 0.1, kind of still has that distortion. And then we can, you know, round this up a little bit more and have jitter on. It makes it look like it's a tube TV. I mean, that's super cool. So we could comp this into a TV to get kind of an old TV kind of look. But we don't need that for right now. So we'll change this back down. Something else you can do is turn off fit and of course jitter. And if we turn on projector, it kind of gives this distortion right here as well. Make it seem like it's in a movie theater, things like that. That's kind of cool as well. But if we change our distort all the way up to one and add our dispersion all the way up to one, it gives this super cool effect right there. And that could be almost like a, like a, uh, a Lord of the Rings or whimsical kind of you know, through dimensions kind of communication thing right there. I mean, that's, that's super cool right there as well. So that is definitely something you can do with this node. So it's far more of a node than just correcting lens distortion, as you can see. Definitely a lot of fun. Definitely a lot of fun. So just play with some of these settings, you know. You can, you can try new things with this and get different effects. And it's really, really cool. Definitely one of my favorite nodes within Blender. So that is correcting lens distortion from wide angle shots inside of Blender. And as you can see, it's very simple to do. That pretty much wraps up this episode. Thank you so much for watching. We have a new episode of Filmworld Community coming this Tuesday. Make sure you get your questions in for that in the comments below or on the Filmworld forum or tweet me or whatever. <laughs> and then we also have another episode of Premiere Prep coming next Friday. That really wraps it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm your host, Michael Pendleton. Remember to live your life one frame at a time, and I will catch you next time.